Could the whispers behind the curtain of IPW actually be the echoes of an ancient civilization still shaping the fate of humanity today? Now that's what I call wrestling. I don't know what's going on around here. Hey there, sports fans. My name is Kit Parsons, better known as professional wrestler Magnum CK, and this is now That's What I Call Wrestling. <laughs> the, the, the finger points have been out of control lately. And this is a special edition of Now That's What I Call Wrestling. Now this... Conspiracy. Yes, I am, of course, diving deep into what you'll already recognize as the greatest conspiracy in the history of professional wrestling. Yes, we are taking a brief distraction from the action of the world wrestling empire and diving back into IPW, back into international pro wrestling for one of our special deep dive episodes. This time, conspiracy. Yes, professional wrestling, the United States, and even the world have had their fair share of conspiracies and conspiracy theories. None more elaborate, none more elusive, none more deeply integrated like a like a tick into the annals of history than the conspiracy of the gorgeous JR. We talked a little bit about IPW. They are another one of our Southwest United States Wrestling Federations. I have a bit of an update, so um, this footage might look like it's from 1979. But it is somehow from round about 1990, which is absolutely wild and only lends itself to the incredulous credibility. Incre only lends it and it only lends itself to the incredulous credibility of our story tonight because somehow they have found a pocket of time in 1990 that has somehow degraded all of their equipment presentation and performances. Yep. Again, if you're new to this show, we don't just talk about bad wrestling, and we certainly don't talk about good wrestling because we don't have time for it. We talk about good, bad wrestling. I could just keep talking about it, or we could just dive into it because still waters run deep, and so does... So... Because this story is also... Like a still water deep. I don't know what's going on around here. We start our story with a fresh-faced newcomer. The beautiful, the gorgeous, the gorgeous JR is making his debut in IPW, International Pro Wrestling. And you'd be hard-pressed to find a more fresh-faced baby face than the gorgeous JR. Hello, welcome to the IPW, the gorgeous JR. JR, welcome. That's right, Mr. Lee. It's almost like the gorgeous JR didn't expect that the announcer, Buddy Lee, was going to ask him any questions. <laughs> it's like he didn't know why he was here, and he thought maybe Buddy Lee was going to do all the talking. And it's like, oh, you want? Yeah, uh, I, I am here. <laughs> the gorgeous one is here after many weeks of contract negotiations. The JR and the IPW have finally got it together. 235 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal. Not so much, but it doesn't really matter because the, the naming convention is so far my favorite part. Aside from that uh, that beautiful <laughs> that beautiful couch cover that he's cut into a vest. I love uh, the the gorgeous JR. The JR. It's very interesting. The men's pride and the women's delight. The toast of the coast with the utmost. And so fine. So very fine. Ooh. Buddy Lee with the reaction to that. Buddy Lee likes it. Buddy Lee is buying what the JR is selling. You know, they say a lot if you're performing, you know, you have, if you believe it, they'll believe it. He believes it. I believe it. I'm here for one reason and one reason only. That's to go after the gold and be the number one contender in this organization. I'm coming after all these wrestlers in the IPW. All of them, beware. JR is here. He's going to be there. He's going to be after you. So all of you get in line. I'm here for one reason, and that's to be number one. Okay. So we have a lot of the same tropes that we normally get, you know, from a lot of these different types of promos. We may have set the indoor record for one reason and one reason only. That's always that's always a trope. That's always, always how you know a promo is going to be terrible when someone keeps saying that. Uh, but the important fact is this. The JR is here. The gorgeous JR himself is here. And look at the excitement in his face. Yeah, he started off a little rocky. He was a little shocked in the beginning. He didn't know he was going to have to say anything. 
He's very clearly pumped up, man. Like he is in good spirits, but that's important to note. He's in good spirits, but like all good things, they must come to an end. Foreshadowing. We're back. This next match featuring tag team action with some of the biggest men in the pro wrestling world. Now let's go to the ring. Buddy Lee has so much tension in his voice, body, face, delivery, and demeanor that, like, I'm nervous. <laughs> like, I, like, my heart rate was good. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty low. Good, like, uh, uh, 54, 55. He started talking, spiked, 89. Like, I'm tense. <laughs> Dress is the silent killer, Buddy Lee. So we jump right into the gorgeous JR's first foray into the IPW ring, which is a tag match. So he's teaming up. He's teaming up with Bulldozer, who is someone who I cannot wait for us to dive into here uh, in, in, a, in an upcoming episode. Bulldozer just recently passed away. One of my favorites of all time. But teaming up with Bulldozer against the Mighty Nation, who actually are a pretty decent tag team that I enjoy watching. So Listen, we saw the gorgeous JR come in, fresh face, ready to go, and all we can do is see how he fares. But based on his general excitement and demeanor, obviously going to be some great things to come. Pushed him right back into the road, and that stopped Bulldozer's momentum. Bulldozer getting over the referee a little bit. Worth reminding everyone, if you haven't seen one of our IPW episodes or if this is your, your first one in general, IPW's production company ruined all their footage by piping in fake crowd noise that is... Um, I would say 15 to 16 times louder than the commentators. So the footage is essentially unwatchable. So I'm going to do my best to not use any of their audio and try to explain what's happening. Interesting for Bulldozer. He is sporting one of our favorite looks here on Now That's What I Call Wrestling, which is the t-shirt under the singlet. Bold move, bold strategy. It's essentially the t-shirt in the pool of professional wrestling. There's nothing wrong with wearing a t-shirt with your wrestling gear, but wearing it under the singlet is an interesting choice. I love that Bulldozer thought for a second he was going to try for that like little tricky handstand thing guys do out of leg scissors and just was like, forget it, forget it. You know you know that he released some some gas into the arena trying to, sw <laughs> trying to swing his belly welly around for that handstand. He's calling for the break. Bulldozer getting up in the air, man. Bulldozer can fly, baby. <laughs> now, Bulldozer showed up tonight, not just with his motorcycle boots on, but with his working boots. Okay, now finally, the man we're all here to see, the gorgeous JR, he's made his debut. We're finally going to see what this guy's made of. The contract negotiations, he alluded to it, but if you look at Tulsa World, if you look at all the bigger newspapers at the time nationwide, you can see that negotiations were tense. The negotiations for the gorgeous JR, from what I've read, were between IPW, obviously, the World Wrestling Empire and Tulsa. There was a Kmart with some really competitive offers. All right, JR immediately showing us what he's made of by wearing what I can only guess are some sort of like some sort of like rollerblading forearm protection pads. Whatever, man. Listen, he's a mystery. We don't know what's going on with this guy. I'm a fan of the Tarzan singlet and the long tights. Um, it's a look I wish I would have taken on in my career. I'm very jealous, but already here we go. JR within 30 seconds of being in, going for the rest hold, conserving his energy. I like it. This is a debut. Don't blow your wad, kid. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> wonderful use. Wonderful use of our time here with uh, uh, trying to cut off the opponent who's trying to make the tag who just kind of ignores your cutoff and just makes the tag anyway. <laughs> Uh, looks to be, looks like the gorgeous JR has decided to propose, uh, is an interesting strategy. I you don't see it very often in wrestling. Um, rarely, you know, uh, rarely employed strategy, but it could work. Just to stop the momentum of standing there. Show some veteran, uh, veteran thinking right there. Yes, it did. And then, you know, he just attacked Swing shot off of the rope. I like how uh, the Mighty Nation member, and I'm, uh, apologies, I don't remember their names off the top of my head, um, just didn't go for the handshake at all. So JR had to like just push his way toward him and just kick him in the stomach anyway. <laughs> like, hey man, we talked about, dude, we talked about this thing we were going to do where I was going to get down like I was going to propose and shake your hand or something. We, dude, we talked about the thing, remember, in the back where I said I was going to get down and like kiss your hand like, like a gentleman and then I was going to kick you in the stomach. Come on. That was like the gorgeous JR's one idea for the match. 
The camera work is really interesting on this because uh, I've seen the bad guys get out in and out of the ring like four or five times now, but the camera has never once caught the tag. It's just kind of like loosey-goosey. I like it, actually. It's casual. It's business cash over at the IPW. <laughs> Speaking of, this referee rocking the khakis, <laughs> I definitely 100% just came came off straight from a shift. He came straight from 7-Eleven down, <laughs> down here with those khakis on. In 1997, 11 made you wear khakis. I don't know that, but there's nobody here right now who's going to fact check me. So that's just what's true. I think it's a sign of a pretty uncreative wrestler when they whip someone off the ropes and just do a move to them. And it's not like a finisher or anything. It's not anything special. It's just like you got nothing. So I'm just going to whip you off and give you a move. <laughs> That's how you know we're not dealing with someone who's really uh, putting <laughs> putting the time in to come up with something interesting. What else? Listen. That's what we're here for. This match is only seven minutes long, but I got to be honest, as I'm sitting here watching it uh, in double speed, by the way, it does feel like uh, half my life. <laughs> I love the miscommunications in this. Like, obviously, he's he's uh, Mighty Nation member is like g up for the hot tag here, but like <laughs> Bulldozer just not picking up on those clues and tries to screw it up. <laughs> Twice in one match, the gorgeous JR with the whip off into the backdrop. Hey, if it works, why change it up, man? You know, if you got if you got something that's working for you, that's that's putting your opponent down, that's just making the people just go crazy. Just keep doing it. The gorgeous JR wrestles like I wrestle any sort of wrestling game, which is like I figure out one move to do that's cool, that's effective, and I just do it until I win. <laughs> Three times too many to the well. Okay, interesting. Really interesting. Not what any of us would have expected, I don't think. I don't want to get too speculative yet, but something's not quite right about the way that match ended. I don't know what's going on around here. Now that we've met the gorgeous JR, it is time, unfortunately, to introduce one of the most controversial characters in the history of wrestling, one of the most mysterious, enigmatic, polarizing figures of all time, Tony the spider <laughs> because while the finish of that match left some questions it seemed abrupt it seemed out of nowhere it seemed like it shouldn't have happened that way something seemed a little off about it right after that match tony the spider joins buddy lee here's tony the spider <laughs> if you people only knew <laughs> out of the ring terrifying <laughs> terrifying on, on every possible level, not just because it's so cryptic, but Tony the Spider. Let's look at Tony the Spider. Tony the Spider looks like your sister's boyfriend who said that he let you borrow his Sega Saturn controller and came back over to pick it up again and left with it when you were at your friend Jonathan's house. But then turns out, it was not his controller. It was my controller that Tony the Spider took and that it was just a lie and he never gave it back. Tony the Spider looks like someone who would be arrested for stealing spray paint. I swear Tony the Spider was, was the assistant manager at the movie theater when I worked there 20 years ago, <laughs> who just one day didn't work there anymore and no one wanted to talk about it, but like there were lots of interviews conducted afterward <laughs> amongst the staff. <laughs> not necessarily one of my dramatic noise insults, but like, a little too close to reality. <laughs> so Tony the Spider, what is he alluding to? So we just had this weird finish of this match, and then Tony the Spider comes out with this cryptic talk. It's too much. We got to check in with JR and see what's going on here. Ladies and gentlemen, the gorgeous JR. That's right, the gorgeous one's here. Okay, right off the bat, JR is looking different. His eyes are telling a different story this time around. JR looking, went from looking happy to be there, excited, full of energy, to just disgruntled he went from gruntled to disgruntled pretty quickly and i've got something to say i'm not too happy about the way things are going right now things are not going to suit the jr the gorgeous jr looks like he's going to marry your mother and you're going to have to just learn to like it <laughs> i'm going to find out what's going on i'm going to get to the bottom of it i'll go straight to the promotion if need be i'll go with the referees whoever 
Things are not going the way JR needs them to go. So I will find out what's going on, and I'm going to do something about it. I will get to the bottom of it. Different tone from JR. Like, started out angry, ended a little desperate here. Gorgeous JR, like, something's rattling. You'd be hard pressed to find a more confident man than the gorgeous JR when we started. Now this man is shaken. There's doubt in those eyes. I mean, I hate to quote Shakespeare on this show all the time, but something's rotten in the state of Arkansas. I don't know what's going on around here. So we've taken a look at the gorgeous JR in the ring. We've seen that it didn't go like how he and everyone thought it was going to go. I think it's only fair now that we've introduced this mysterious Tony the Spider that we take a look at what he's capable of out there. A six-man tag team match while Bill Ash, Robert Seaburn, and Tony the Spider against Mighty Nation and Rockin' Randy Bright. So again for this one, we have the Mighty Nation teaming up with Rock and Randy against Wild Bill Ash, Robert Seaburn, and Tony the Spider. Really interesting combination of guys here. So Tony... The spider just surreptitiously clawing his way into this match. Let's see what the spider's spinning out there. Tony the spider looks a lot like this guy who used to come to a gym I worked out in who would put earplugs in each ear and he would put on a sweatband and uh, would stand in front of the speed bag, the boxing speed bag, and march in place and just hit that speed bag for 20 straight minutes as loudly as possible and then just take off his earplugs and leave. That was it. That's exactly who Tony the Spider reminds me of. Tony the Spider, okay, this is what we expected. This guy is out of control. He is moving a million miles an hour, being very aggressive. Wild Bill Ass here. The veteran trained a lot of these guys, ran IPW, bootmaker, longtime bootmaker from long back. They can't get out of the gates. No surprise. No surprise. So far, about what I expected. Tony the Spider, an overly aggressive. Maybe it seems like he's enjoying it a little too much. Robert Sebron is, is an unsung hero on these tapes because, like, this guy. I mean, he's absolutely, if there's ever a Hall of Fame for, now that's what I call wrestling, Robert Sebring is a first class, first class inductee because this guy hits all, hits all the buttons, right? He's got just the right amount of chest hair. He holds his arms to his side the perfect amount. He looks actually scared a little bit at most times and everything he does looks awkward and clunky. This guy, first round all-star. Robert Seaman runs the ropes like someone falling down a set of stairs. <laughs> this guy, he is just like a walking disaster. This guy. <laughs> someone put a wet floor sign in that ring, boy, because Robert Seaman is slip sliding all over the place. <laughs> Too fast for old Seaman. Somehow, so hold on, hold on. So Robert Seaman. Slip slides and falls all over the ring and then and then trips over a dude and then gets kind of clotheslined, but then falls down and starts holding his ass. <laughs> it's perfect. It's exactly what we needed. I like in wrestling, you can tell what hurts somebody because they touch it with the back of their hand. Like that. How else would I know? Like a lot of times that happens to me, you know, like if I, I'm taking my dog for a walk and my knee hurts, I'm like, oh man, I oh, just leaning down, putting my back of my hand on it so that all my neighbors know that I'm, I'm really trying to convey my pain. Reached down and grabbed him up off the mat. Now with a big suplex and he goes down. And he for the... Sebring, Sebring got out of there for real. <laughs> He's had enough. <laughs> and it's unfortunate that Wild Bill got in because um, he's probably the, one of the only wrestlers on the card. And as if our prayers were answered, as if Wild Bill heard us from the heavens, he immediately tags out for Tony the Spider, who's we're here to see. I do love that Tony the Spider does look genuinely 
uh, alarmed by just being in the ring. Like, he seems like this is some sensory overload. <laughs> he just, he takes a drop to hold and just lays there like a dead body. Ah, oh, I love this. I love this. This is my, I, I love this show. Uh. There it is. Do, do we need to know anymore? The work them back, shoot them off, clothesline. That's it. Just <laughs> shoot them off and do a move. <laughs> That's how you know you're in there with the pro, baby. Sebrin <laughs> Sebrin does not know what to make of this. It's like uh, Robert Sebrin wrestles like he showed up to this building because he thought it was bingo tonight or something. And then someone was like, oh, you're here to wrestle. And he was too polite to say anything and just started putting on some stuff that was laying around and got in there and is just very surprised by the physicality of all this. <laughs> very casual rope run, though. I like it. <laughs> very relaxed. <laughs> like, just kind of lean on the rope, give a little look to the camera if you can. No, you'll get him next time. He'll get him next time. <laughs> Careful. He's improving. He only stumbled a little bit over the drop down. Not bad. We're getting there. We got this is basically uh, this IPW match is like a real life uh, training session <laughs> happening in the ring. You never get they're giving us the inside look. So one thing about IPW that they do is they would cut matches in half. So mid match, they would uh, cut off and then come back to the match next week for the second half of the match. So if you didn't watch next week, you would just never find out who won. <laughs> I love that, like, very much like <laughs> Tony the Spider trying to shoot one off, trying to shoot one on uh, Rock and Randy over here, really just trying to, like, get an actual pin. Like, nah, nah, kid, I'm not going for that small package. We're just going to go home right now. <laughs> Kick out by Brian again. Brian for the body slam, it looks like him. <laughs> Tony the Spider did not want to go for the ride on this body slam. If I did the like, oh, no, please, I know it's coming. Oh, hang on for your dear life, Tony the Spider. Trying to get out of the ring for real. Manages to make the tag. Standing Bear with a weighted match. Oh, yeah. Good power slam by Standing Bear. I, I've never seen someone hit the ropes like totally sideways. It's like he's trying to spin around. Like, maybe he thinks that running the ropes would mean you hit one rope and then just spin in a circle across the ring to get to the other side, which would be amazing to watch. I mean, he's not wrong there. Maybe he was trying to innovate. <laughs> I love the roll for no reason. That's great. It's a great touch. Rolling out of the corner. Here we go. It's it's our type of show. They just start over for no reason and go back into circling for a lockup. Perfect. That's how we know we're in the right place, man. You see people who can't run the ropes. You people see people... 10, 11 minutes into a match, just start it over again. We're home. This is a terrifying <laughs> predicament. This is, a lot of you might recognize this if you've ever gone to like any of the pro wrestling museums or exhibits. The sweatiest uh, chin lock in the history of pro wrestling actually happened on this show. Just glistening. Just, just Red Eagle absolutely glistening. Looking like he's being choked to death. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. Definitely doing, that's what you're supposed to do. If you're choking, you're supposed to indicate toward the throat. It's exactly, it's the perfect, it's the perfect, uh, that could be in a safety video. Tony the Spider and Regal and a uh, little uh, drag to the face there with his fingers, it looks like. Tony's going to work on Red Eagle's going for a fireman's carry. No, no. Oh, oh my God. So much just happened. First of all, Red Eagle's like, uh, no, that's not going to work for me, brother, on that Fireman's Gary takeover. And just straight up for real spike, just spikes Tony the Spider right on his head. It's almost like Red Eagle knew something that we don't about Tony the Spider and tried to just end everyone's suffering right now. Here comes Robert Sabre. Let's we'll see if he can capitalize on what Tony the Spider started. Robert Sabre now. Slinging, standing bear to the other turn. Cool strategy, bro. Take the guy you've been beating up and throw him into the opposite corner so he can tag out. Pretty bold strategy. You got a guy in your corner, worn down. 
throw him into the other side, tag in a fresh guy. Mix it up. You never know. Roll the dice. <laughs> Bear to the other turnbuckle. And tag drop. <laughs> Rock and Randy with the straight up running kick to the nuts. <laughs> that's a hell. That's a hell of a move. It makes you wonder why people don't do it more often. This guy, man, this guy, he just can't get a break. Like he wasn't even supposed to be here. He was just trying to meet his. He was just trying to meet his elderly mother here for bingo, and he just got thrown into this match. Now he's been kicked in the nuts. Randy Bryant dropping a big elbow. He's going for the pin, buddy. That's cover. Okay, so Tony the Spider's team didn't win, but somehow he was nowhere to be found. He took that that spiked DDT right on his head and then just kind of somehow magically got out of the situation and didn't get pinned. Really mysterious circumstances to end this match and not exactly the way we thought it might have been going. Luckily, because of people who have documented all these things, we get an almost immediate response from Tony the Spider following this strange ending of this match. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Tony the Spider. <laughs> Interesting. What does Tony the Spider know that nobody else knows? I don't know what's going on around here. As the mystery starts to deepen around what is happening with the Gorgeous JR and what Tony the Spider may or may not have to do with it, we get another match from the Gorgeous JR, this time against Johnny Malibu, who, in case you were wondering, yes, does have Paradise City on the back of his trunks. So thanks for asking. So JR looking a little unkempt, looking a little more haggard this match for some reason, looking like... Uh, maybe he's he hasn't been sleeping well. Same Jr. Still pulling the hair. Okay, so maybe he's shaking it off. Maybe maybe all this was really for nothing. Maybe he's doing just fine. I love this kind of casual watch the clock, scope out the the hot dog stand, <laughs> the arm lock we have on here. Like, uh, 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 just like uh, can't wait till quitting time. <laughs> Okay, gorgeous JR, man, he's aggressive in this one. All right, maybe I misjudged. Like, maybe he's not as rattled as I thought. He seems almost like a man who's, like, fighting for his life here. Like, he's really letting out a lot of aggression, really taking it to Johnny Malibu. Johnny Malibu at the disadvantage at this point on the mat. First of all, way too far away, sir. <laughs> I have seen the way you move around the ring, and I do not have faith that you can make a jump that far. Down, I do believe. I risk maneuver. The gorgeous JR, man, that's why That's why they had the negotiations. Jumps like that, he's got legs like that. Look how far, I, I, hey, I'm, I'm man enough to admit when I'm wrong. And I was wrong about the gorgeous JR. He can jump six to seven feet off the buckle. JR, really aggressive, man. Like just Johnny Malibu can't even get out of the gates. Uh, JR, when he gets a man in trouble, he really punishes him. Whip off, do a move. Hey, tail is all the time. It, it always works. I would say our offense right here is 95% the JR and 5% Paradise City, man. This is this is not looking good. JR is taking out some frustrations. Even just throw that another fist. Now that's what I would question, the fist. So much. There's one thing about Malibu, he stood on his feet longer than I thought. He took two hard fists and was still on his feet. Okay, how? How could that have happened? I'll, like, we just watched, this match was only 3 minutes and 25 seconds. And in that time, almost all of it, the gorgeous JR is just pummeling Johnny Malibu. And then out of nowhere, Malibu just gets a very simple roll-up victory. It just, none of it is adding up. Unfortunately, right after this match, some cryptic truths may or may not have been revealed. Tony the Spider does look like uh, he rolls his own cigarettes. <laughs> uh, Tony the Spider actually sold my cousin some bootleg Nintendo cartridges in 1991. <laughs> 
Uh, he sold he sold Super Marion Brothers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Tony the Spider. <laughs> I got a new name for every opponent that gets in the ring with me. I call them pedal pushers. If you morons know anything about it, you know where I'm putting them. Tony the Spider means business in IPW, and I'm going to take everyone I can out. Now let's go to the ring. Pedal pushers. So, like... If you're pushing up daisies, right? Like, that means you're dead. So did we just hear a death threat from Tony the Spider? Vague enough to be cryptic. Vague enough to make me wonder who he was talking to. I think at this point, given, you know, we could speculate all day, but I think we need to check in with the gorgeous JR one more time and see where his head is after this veiled threat from Tony the Spider. It was a gorgeous one. Buddy Lee, this thing is continuing to go just like it was before. So first of all, the gorgeous JR is very sweaty. <laughs> he has bags under his eyes. He's still wearing the same outfit, but this guy has not slept all week. <laughs> this guy looks like he's rode hard and put away wet. This, he's not, he, he needs a nap. He needs a sandwich. He needs a shower. <laughs> he probably needs to, to get to cut back on cigarettes a little bit. <laughs> Guy's looking yellow. I don't know what's going on around here. Things are just not right. I'm trying to get the promotion. They won't talk to me. I'm trying to talk to referees. I'm trying to talk to somebody with some authority. Nobody wants to talk to JR. What's going on here? It's getting to be like a conspiracy against me for some reason. I've done nothing but come in here, win matches, do my best, and I guess somebody don't like it. They're conspired against JR for some reason. And believe me, I am going to get to the bottom of this if it's the last thing I ever do. I don't like to be conspired against. I'm not going to have it. We'll be right back. Okay, dude. Like, so wound up that he's doing the, like, looking around to make sure, like, you know, he's not going to pass it. Like, he's got, like, the little floaty dots in front of his eyes because he's so wound up. Listen. I'm not trying to make light of this because that's the last known footage in IPW that we have of the gorgeous JR. Uh, A a run that never even got started. One of the most talked about free agents in the history of pro wrestling shows up at a major promotion like IPW and can't even get out of the gates and and Tony the Spider's running around being all cryptic. There's a reason why this is one of the most conspiracy theory inducing stories in the history of pro wrestling. And we need to dive into those theories now. I don't know what's going on around here. So we know that the gorgeous JR came in like a house of fire. We know that he was ready to make a difference. And we know that Tony the Spider seems to have some sort of hand in stopping it. But how? But there's a third person that we haven't talked about. Who exactly is Buddy Lee? And what, if anything, does he have to do with this conspiracy? If you go back and you look at the footage, watch Buddy Lee's face. Watch some of his reactions to Tony the Spider, right? When Tony the Spider is talking about his cryptic ideas and his cryptic plans, what's the face that that Buddy Lee's making? Now go back and you can see the faces that Buddy Lee's making. We talked about it when the gorgeous JR was really laying it on and Buddy Lee seemed excited. Could he have been acting? Because look at some of his faces later. When we see the gorgeous JR at his lowest, at his most distraught, what is the face that Buddy Lee is making? So this isn't a full-blown theory, but many have speculated that Buddy Lee has some sort of hand in what happened here. So we'll go through the four major theories right now. The first theory, manipulated matches and quantum entanglement. It doesn't make any sense. Why two different times would JR out of nowhere when it didn't make any sense, why out of nowhere would he get pinned and not be able to kick out? What is happening there? How did Tony the Spider manage to get out of the ring when he just had potential brain damage, uh, CTE and neck damage from a DDT? How was he able to get out of the ring? The only explanation that some people have shared that makes any kind of sense whatsoever is quantum entanglement. For those of you who don't know, quantum entanglement is essentially a phenomenon where particles become interconnected in such a way that the state of one, no matter where they are in space, affects the state of the other. That would make sense here. Why would these finishes happen out of nowhere? 
JR is a proud man. He's not just going to give up a match and lay down. He came in to prove a point. Why couldn't he kick out of these out of nowhere moves that man, it's totally out of pocket. The roll-ups weren't just losses, okay? The roll-ups were moments where the gorgeous JR's fate was quantumly linked to a predetermined outcome influenced by technology hidden under the ring itself. That's the theory, okay? Keep an open mind. Some people have pointed out that Tony the Spider's cryptic comments could have alluded to this kind of quantum entanglement, this kind of potentially alien technology. Maybe it's even uh, alien technology that was co-opted by the government. We could go really deep on it, but that's the general gist of it. It's entirely possible that the referees inside their gorgeous khakis were wearing maybe even unwittingly devices that would activate certain things when certain code words were given or certain, certain uh, uh, measurements were, were introduced into the machinery that would cause the gorgeous JR to be forced down to the mat and unable to get up. Theory two is a little out there. I'm just gonna warn you, okay? It institutes a potential shadowy alliance and a galactic council. All right, all right, it's ancient alien stuff, but it's entirely possible. You can't prove it isn't that Buddy Lee and Tony the Spider are some sort of galactic emissaries or working on behalf of some sort of like not of this world government that have big stakes in IPW. It could be maybe there's an intergalactic scouting operation going on. Maybe they were trying to find the best warriors in the galaxy and the gorgeous JR signing with IPW could have maybe you know, throwing a monkey wrench into their plans of who they were trying to groom to take up for the intergalactic championships. I don't know. I can't prove any of it. It's not my job to prove it. It's just my job to share it with you. I am dropping these crumbs. You just follow them, collect them all, take them home, and then like ba bake them into a bake them into bake them into some bake make a salad. Theory three involves psychological rifts. All right, so go with me on this. So obviously there's some psychological manipulation happening against the gorgeous JR. He's being conspired against. He's tried to talk to the promoters. He's tried to talk to the referees. Nobody will talk to the JR. So that's obviously, we know it's psychological. Is it possible that we're dealing with interdimensional rifts that are causing JR to experience alternate timelines? Just enough, right? Not, not like a far off timeline, but just like an adjacent timeline, maybe two timelines over where everything's just weird enough and just off enough that he can't succeed and it's driving him slowly insane. And, and, and Tony the Spider and Buddy Lee perhaps are ask, acting as like, they're acting as like gatekeepers right like they're they're facilitating the whole thing they're monitoring all of jr's progress maybe they need maybe whoever they is maybe it's maybe it's some sort of not of this world being maybe it's the government itself maybe it's something else entirely maybe it's interdimensional i don't know but maybe they whoever they are they need the gorgeous jr's brain broken and the last theory is a pretty simple straightforward one i saved it for last because it's the most likely mk ultra Okay. MK Ultra. All right. I've done some of experimenting here myself. I've I've dive, I've done the research on this one and I have found that pedal pedal pusher pusher. could possibly be an activation code, an activation term for Tony the Spider. Maybe he's trying to activate Buddy Lee's MK Ultra training, indoctrination, turning him into this the super warrior, right? It's entirely possible. It's a weird thing to say. Pedal, pedal pusher, pusher. All right. I'm just saying it sounds like a code. If someone said pedal pusher to me in a discussion, I would, I would ask them, frankly, I would ask them if they were wearing a wire. So Tony's pedal pusher comments, actually an activation code related to convert like an NK ultra mind control program in IPW and buddy Lee didn't even know unwilling participant. It's possible. Why would he shift? Why would Buddy Lee go from like, hey, loving JR's here to all of a sudden being happy that JR's life is being ruined and his wife ran off some bar fly and that his kids don't respect him anymore? There's some evidence to, that really implicates this theory as the, as the most likely scenario that I've been saving for the very end. And it's Tony the Spider's laugh. If you slow it down and you play it backwards, I like I'm nervous. My hands are shaking. I don't want to share this. Uh, I feel like I feel like I don't want to. I don't want to get. I don't want to get in any trouble for sharing this. I don't want any, anyone to come looking for me. You know, I don't want to upset the wrong, you know, three-letter agencies out there. Okay, but I slowed down Tony the Spider's laugh and I played it backward at about sixty percent, and I think it's pretty clear. So you tell me. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Tony the Spider.
The gorgeous JR, you are far too sexy and gorgeous to be here. You are interfering with our plans. We must end you. There is no way that you can continue to be in the IPW, and we will make you slowly lose your mind. And we will make your wife leave you as well, and your kids will no longer respect you, and you will be eating cold hot dogs over the sink. This is what you get for being far too gorgeous and so fine. So very, very fine. And the Ultra. If you made it this far, then, in my opinion, you made it to the truth. There's one more piece of video I want to show you. So I was able to figure out the exact date of a lot of these events, and it was actually 1994. I have a video here from one year later, 1995. I mentioned that JR was never seen again in IPW, but JR did show up at another promotion the next year, not even a full calendar year later. And you can see the effect that this experience whether it was quantum entanglement, whether it was psychological warfare, whether it was intergalactic, interdimensional rifts, whether it was MK Ultra, which it probably was, we can see the effect. Everybody knows me. That's not him. <laughs> Just so you know, like I know I set it up and then it seems like that's him. That would be a rough transition. <laughs> but uh, but no, he's coming out. My name is Animal. I'm Mr. Alzado's bodyguard. He's got something he wants to say. Mr. Alzado, come on in here and tell him what you got. Hudson, did you see that, boy? Let me tell you something. Last week, all around this territory at Ozark Mountain Wrestling, you got on my wrong side, boy. I done found out one thing. The rookie days is over as far as Alzado's concerned. Baby, this coming week, things has done got serious. You're getting in my hip pocket. You caused this promotion to put me up with $1,000 in cash. Let me tell you something, buddy. That's more money a lot of these people in this territory make in one month. And I've got to dish it out in one night, possibly to all these rednecks out here that's coming to these matches. Let me tell you something. My man Animal is going to be in my corner, and who knows who else, because I'm bringing some more in. All I can say is, Hanson, you better be ready, you better beware, because Alzado is going to be there. In the twilight of our understanding, amidst the shadows cast by the flickering lights of the IPW arena, we stand. A collective on the brink of an epiphany, yet grasping at the ether. The narrative we've unfurled together, it's more than a sequence of events, more than the sum of its parts. It's a mosaic, a kaleidoscope of possibilities where each piece refracts a truth so multifaceted it eludes our simplest comprehension. Consider the odyssey of the gorgeous JR. I don't know what's going on around here. Consider the odyssey of the gorgeous JR. Not just a tale of ambitions derailed by deception, but a timeless parable, reflecting our collective struggle against the unseen forces shaping our destinies. His journey, mirrored in our own lives, and Tony the Spider, <laughs> with his enigmatic chaos, both hint at a universe ordered by a secret symphony, their narratives interwoven in the grand tapestry of existence. Buddy Lee. Let's go to the ring for the next match. The supposed narrator of truths, and of course, panel pushers. pushers. Both symbols of destiny's manipulation draw us into the heart of a labyrinth where the quest for understanding becomes our own. As we stand at the juncture of myth and reality, we're invited not to solve, but to marvel at the enigma of our being, embracing the quest for meaning as a sacred rite. This journey through the wrestling ring of life, a meditation on the human spirit, reminds us that in the pursuit of the unknown, we might find not only the thrill of discovery, but also the grace to cherish the dance of existence. Departing not with answers, but with a renewed awe for life's mystery. We're propelled forward, ever seeking, ever questioning in the eternal match against the unknown. Yep, 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 yep.